Greetings and salutations. My name is Don Dillard. I am a philosophy professor. And in this Philosophy 101 video, I'd like to address the famous lifeboat moral dilemma and to talk about why something is a moral dilemma in the first place. Let's get started. Here, let's begin by defining what a moral dilemma is. A moral dilemma involves a conflict of moral values, which necessarily requires sacrificing at least one value in favor of another, although a moral dilemma can involve multiple conflicting values. And the conflict in question is not easily or practically solvable. I talked a little bit about this in a previous video entitled How to Identify Moral Issues and Dilemmas. The link is in the description below. So to find, let's look at our case, the lifeboat dilemma. Now it's worth noting that there are many versions of this dilemma, so let's call this one the food shortage version. The basic case for the food shortage version of the lifeboat dilemma is this. Imagine that you're on an ocean-going ship. Imagine further that the ship begins to sink in the middle of the ocean. Finally, imagine that you and a handful of others survive the sinking on a lifeboat. To help frame this dilemma, we need to add some additional details. No one on the lifeboat is a skilled navigator, and there are no navigation devices. Furthermore, the ship sank hundreds of miles from land. You do have food and water, but it's a very limited amount such that only with careful rationing, you can keep 10 people alive for 15 days. However, there are 30 survivors. So even with careful rationing, there is only enough food and water for five days. And while the human body can go without food for several months, human beings cannot survive more than three days without water. This means, effectively, that there's only enough food and water for 30 people to survive eight days. However, no rescue will be possible and no land will be reached for at least two weeks. That said, now we stand in a good position to see the dilemma. It's possible that one-third of the people on the lifeboat could survive, but at the cost of two-thirds of the people of the lifeboat. It's not possible to keep everyone alive, but some people could live. Therefore, the question is, who gets to live? Now, the standard trope for sinking ships is women and children first. The implication being women and children have a greater value than men. This value manifests itself out of a perception that women and children require protection because they are weaker than adult men. And there's some social obligation which requires adult men to protect weaker people. Adult males clearly have a moral value as human beings, but the standard trope implies other values such as the value of protecting weaker persons. Clearly, the trope is sexist, and therefore this arrangement of values is sexist. And this fact should be factored into our final analysis. But with survival on the line, maybe a strong-leaning feminist might be less inclined to object to this kind of sexism. So what else might matter? Should age matter? If there are elderly peoples in the lifeboat, why doesn't the standard trope say elderly and children first, instead of women and children first? After all, an elderly person is weaker than an adult female. Yet, there is some value attached to the quantity of life. If an elderly person has 10 years ideally left to live, and the adult woman has ideally 50 years left to live, then the value we attach to the quantity of life seems to put greater value on the life of the adult woman over that of the life of the elderly person. So what else might matter? Should character matter? For example, if someone is a career criminal or a person who has devoted their life to charity 
What about education? For example, a person who has no education at all, in contrast to a person who is a Nobel Prize winning scientist. It seems that we do attach certain values to certain kinds of character and education. So these things might factor into our final analysis as well. Now, even so, with all of these competing values, there are inevitable gray areas. For example, if there is a decision between a Nobel Prize winning scientist who is elderly and a young woman who is a drug addict and a queer criminal, the standard trope of favoring women over the elderly is now called into question. And this is what makes the lifeboat case a dilemma. It's not merely a case where some people live and some people die. A hard decision needs to be made. And the decision requires sacrificing some values in favor of others. And it's a hard decision precisely because there is no easy, obvious, or practical solution. Okay. That's all I have for now. I hope this very brief video was informative. I appreciate your kind attention. And until next time, take care.